Now, there are three sets of circumstances that can get, uh, can get them into trouble. Uh, they cannot be high enough or they can be too high. In other words, 151 miles plus or minus. If they're not high enough, they will simply increase their speed, which will cause them to go higher. As a matter of fact, they're going to cut their speed off intentionally 30 feet per second short of what it would require so that they do have that burn to do in any event. If they are uh, too high, they will simply slow down their speed by burning this way. That's circumstance number one that they must correct for right here. Circumstance number two is that they could reach their high point too soon. Say they reach it here or reach it too late over here. Well, the way to compensate for that is to burn up or burn down. You add no energy to the orbit when you burn up or burn down, so you do not raise or lower its high point. You simply change the place where the high point is going to occur. So that's circumstance number two that must be taken care of right here within that eight minutes. And the third and most complicated one is if they're not lined up properly in plane, if they're too far to the right or too far to the left. They can burn either to the right or to the left and compensate for that partially because they can't do it all here. Let's say that the orbit of one is the target is like this and they're going to cross it right here, whereas they want to cross it here. All right, and they make a little maneuver here that will compel them to cross it right here. And they do that by getting their speed and their direction parallel at a given point because they know that 90 degrees later, they're going to have a nodal crossing. We said once before, anytime you get your velocity vectors parallel, they're going to have a nodal crossing 90 degrees later. Here's Jack Key. T minus six, all still going well with the countdown. Three minutes from this time, we will go into a plan built in hold. That hold time has now been refined to an exact two minutes and 21 seconds. Following that hold time, we will resume the countdown, aiming toward an ignition of the Gemini launch vehicle at 42 minutes and 23 seconds after the hour. Three seconds thereafter, we will, should get the liftoff. That is the uh, sequence between ignition and liftoff. We get the ignition of the Gemini launch vehicle at zero in the countdown. At Launch Complex 19, we've gone through a very thorough status check just moments ago, both of the key uh, participants with the Gemini launch vehicle and the spacecraft. All systems, including the two pilots in the spacecraft, reported they are go. So it's five minutes until launch, actually seven, counting the two-minute hold. Everything is going well. We'll be back after a message from Gulf. Here at Cape Kennedy, it's three minutes to launch by the clock, but this, just this second they have gone into the two-minute and 20-second hold, which we anticipated. That's a little cushion they built into the countdown to allow themselves a bit of time in case they needed it for some minor malfunction. It's turned out they did not need it, and so they will now use it up simply by waiting for the time to pass. At the end of two minutes, about two minutes now, they will resume the count at three minutes. And so the actual launch time, actual launch time is now about five minutes away. Jack King is coming up with an announcement. <coughs> As soon as the countdown is resumed, the first thing that will happen, well, they will feed electronically the information into the spacecraft and the launching vehicle, the Titan, on precisely where the Agena, or the target, is. Uh, this is refined right up to the last moment. The earliest figures were fed in at T minus 18, and they keep refining it right up to the last moment and it will be fed into both the uh, spacecraft and the uh, launch vehicle when the countdown resumes. Veterans of these uh, space watches will recall that on some previous flights we had a scrub because there was an indication that uh, the spacecraft had not received the information. What we're doing now is marking time, just standing in place, waiting for the uh, two minute and 20 second uh, cushion uh, to tick away so that the uh, countdown can be resumed. They've had no problems with the countdown on the um, launching of the astronauts at all today. It has gone uh, perfectly. However, the only problem that occurred was with the spacecraft. Uh, one of the hatches wouldn't seal properly the first time around. It, here is Jack King. This is Gemini Launch Control. Mark, we have resumed our countdown. Now T-minus two minutes, 56 seconds and counting. 
coming up on T-minus two minutes and 50 seconds and counting. As we just come out of the hold, all situations still looking good. We're completely automatic as far as the sequencer is concerned with the Gemini launch vehicle. We have received confirmation that the launch vehicle and the spacecraft computer have received the proper parameters for the flight. Confirmation just came through. We're coming up on T-minus two minutes, 30 seconds and counting. We have a goal from the range at this point, the supervisor range operations, that we are clear to launch. As we get down here in the final moments of the countdown, we'll open the various pre-valves that permit the fuel and the oxidizer to come down toward the thrust chamber in the first stage. Uh, there's one valve left, and that's a thrust chamber valve, which will open when we reach zero in the countdown to permit the fuel and oxidizer to ignite. Now coming up in T-minus two minutes. Mark, T-minus two minutes and counting, T-minus two. We we'll continue to check in the blockhouse to make sure that all of we are getting the proper readouts. T minus one minute, 50 seconds and counting. Still going well at this point. We'll be coming up on the important power transfer in about 10 seconds or so. This is when we go on internal power in the Gemini launch vehicle. The Gemini spacecraft went internal uh, about 10 minutes earlier, completely on internal power. Mark, T minus 90 seconds and counting, T minus 90. We're still looking good during the final phases of the Gemini countdown at this point. We have confirmation that we now are on internal power with the Gemini launch vehicle. Now T minus one minute, 15 seconds and counting. We've made a final check of those engines, those two engines at the base of the Gemini launch vehicle. We have swiveled them once again in response to the guidance system and they have shown that they are working properly at this time. Coming up on T minus 60 seconds, mark T minus 60 seconds and counting. Coming down through the final phases now, we will start to open those free valves to permit the fuel and oxidizer to come down to the chamber. T minus 50 seconds and counting. All still going well at this point. Not too many reports from the blockhouse now as they continue to monitor. T minus 40 seconds and counting. Still looking good at this time. T minus 35. As we continue down, we'll get ignition at zero. T minus 30 seconds and counting. We will get ignition at zero with the Gemini launch vehicle for some 2.8 seconds. We'll take a close look. When we get up to 77% thrust, uh, there'll be another two-tenths of a second to release those explosive bolts. T minus 15 seconds and counting. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. We have ignition. four miles downrange. voices of the astronauts on a five-second delayed basis. That is, five seconds after they say it, we hear it. Flight directors pulling his controllers for a staging status. 
Houston, you're a go for station. 11 is go. 